Today, I am going to show you what iPhone notifications spark joy. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's Marie Kondo time. Also, I have a new photo editing app you're going to like. And if you have to use AT&T, you might as well do it right. It's time for iOS Today. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit iOS Today is brought to you by Aftershocks, unbelievably comfortable open-ear headphones. Hear music and crystal-clear phone calls like never before. Visit iostoday.aftershocks.com and use the code iOS Today for $50 off the tech bundle. And by Calm, the number one app to help you meditate, sleep, and relax. Start 2019 off right with Calm. For a limited time, get 25% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash iOS today. And by Atlassian. Atlassian software powers the full spectrum of collaboration between IT teams and the rest of your organization. Visit Atlassian.com to find out which Atlassian tools are right for your team and give their products a try for free. Today time. Hello, everybody. Welcome to iOS Today. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm Megan Maroney. This is the show where we cover iPhones, iPads, Apple Watches, and Apple TVs. And before we go one step further, I got a lot of email, a lot of email, a lot of email. As did I. And, and because they know I don't read email, so did you, so did Lisa, so did everybody in the building. <laughs> All right. I now know that you can use DuckDuckGo and make it the default search mm -hmm. engine with Safari. I just want to make that clear. I understand that. Uh, I did not know that, however, in the past. And it's not, uh, by the way, completely obvious where to change it. No. So, um, you, you know, you would think you would go to uh, search, Siri and search, mm -hmm. and you would change it there, right? Mm -hmm. But no. Yeah. No, you would think maybe you go to Safari, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, and 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 you change it there, and you do. See where it <laughs> says search engine. So we were we I was ragging on on this show and on MacBreak Weekly. I was saying Apple makes nine billion dollars last year, according to one estimate, because Google searches the default in Safari. Mm -hmm. And I said, if well, if Apple really committed to privacy, they should change that. They should use DuckDuckGo and forego twelve billion dollars. That's the estimate for this year. But you can do it until Apple does. You can easily do it. Google, Yahoo, Bing, which, by the way, I think are pretty much the same thing in DuckDuckGo. And DuckDuckGo, let's be honest, uses Bing a lot. But the thing about DuckDuckGo is it doesn't send information back to the mothership. So Apple talks a lot about privacy in iOS. But anytime you search in Safari, unless you do this, unless you change this, your, your, all your searches are going back to Google. Mm -hmm. And that's just, you know, because Apple makes a lot of money on that. Google pays them a lot of money on it. I, you know, good. Now we know we can change it. Many of you will want to change it. It is also the case that it's the tyranny of the default. Most people don't mm -hmm. change it, don't know you can change it, and so mm -hmm. as a, including moi. So as a result, um, I think it's good for us to uh, to mention that Apple could conceivably change that policy if they mm -hmm. felt like really supporting privacy. Right. I, of course, knew that. I just wanted to make sure people were listening and paying attention. You probably did. It happens all the time that people will say something, and I'll know better, but I'm just listening i'm just kidding i had no idea but it is always nice to it's hear nice from to so many people yeah <laughs> yeah like we you know just, you watch right I, leo's an idiot <laughs> You're listening. i'm still so getting that mail so anyway there's another thing before we get into mm -hmm. the meat of the matter there's another thing we want to talk about which is a fairly serious bug in group facetime mm -hmm. yeah it was uh i guess it's been around since they introduced group face which FaceTime. was last i think you know ios 12 yes uh, point one or something i mean it's not it was fairly recently. But then I guess somebody tweeted, and then Benjamin Mayo from 9to5Mac um, posted a story yesterday afternoon about how you could use FaceTime to listen to someone's conversation. So if you do this little trick, which is you start a FaceTime call with someone, and then you add yourself to the FaceTime call, then that automatically answers the person that you called, whether they answer or not, and then you can hear, and in some cases, you can even see the video. Like, I think if, if you do it on uh, your Mac, you can see the video. Or if they if they decline, I think. There's some, yes, there's a, it's if you decline weird. with your volume button or right. something. It's a weird, it's crazy. It's and a I bug. Didn't, I didn't believe it. And so I, yesterday afternoon, I tried it with my son, Milo. I was like, I'm going to FaceTime you. Uh, don't answer, but make some noise. 
and I couldn't get it to work, but somehow I, Facebook time is so weird in group FaceTime. I added like 21 contacts by accident. So I got all these people being like, why are you FaceTiming me? <laughs> um, so, but then Milo got it to work on his phone. Your it has son, to be an updated. Your teenager. Yeah. Of course, teenagers, right. they know how to do this. It has to be updated. I think he was doing it on his iPad first, what was, which was not updated. What was Milo's reaction? Yeah. So immediately he was like, that is awesome. I am going to do that with all of my friends right no! away. So it was a nice teach. I was like, you can't do it. Why? It's a bug. I can do whatever I want. And I was like, no, you can't because that's be not wrong. nice. And that is spying on someone. And then that made me realize like this could have been disclosed more responsibly. Yeah. Like they didn't have to, I mean, that person didn't have to necessarily tweet it and 9to5Mac didn't have to amplify it. I, As far as I know, they did not go to Apple before they posted this story. The the, the normal uh, way of doing these things, not everybody adheres to this, is you go, if you find a, a flaw like this, you go to the company and you it's called responsible disclosure. You give them 90 days to fix it. If they don't fix it after 90 days, then it's acceptable in the security community that you announce it because otherwise nobody's going to fix it. Uh, but usually you want to say that now... I don't blame 9 to 5 Mac because once it's tweeted, it's out. Mm. So once somebody has publicized it, and probably the person who discovered it wasn't a security researcher, didn't understand the code, and just said, whoa, you won't believe what I found. Mm -hmm. But once it's out, no, nobody's required. In fact, it's probably in everybody's interest that it really be widely disseminated so people are aware of it. And you can disable FaceTime. Here's the good news. Apple immediately disabled group FaceTime. So you won't be, you could see that orange dot next to FaceTime. It says issue, uh, so that it, as far as I know, you can't do it now. No, you can't do and it now. And they say this week they will push out a patch that yeah. will fix it and they'll re-enable FaceTime. So Apple was able to respond. It's a good thing. Apple was able to respond quickly. Had they not been able to respond quickly, this would have been kind of an embarrassing yeah. feature. Um, yeah, so right now, I don't know if this came up before, but if you see my screen, it says people can contact you on all your devices with FaceTime using your phone number or email addresses. So that's like my Megan at twit.tv account that I had that, you know, so anybody who entered Megan at twit.tv, which I give out all the time, could have done this yeah. to me. So apparently it's- They could have listened in. Yeah. Now you would, now also to be fair, you would have probably heard the FaceTime ringtone. Yeah. Uh, and it's only after, once that happens that they can listen in, right? Mm -hmm. So at that point you can decline and mm -hmm. then they wouldn't be able to listen right. in. Right. Unless you did it with a volume button. That's a weird one. But what if you weren't, I mean, what if you just if you were like, I'm ignore it. Yeah. If you silenced stuff or you yeah. ignored it, they're at that point hearing everything you're saying. Yeah. So and yeah. in some cases, seeing everything you're doing. And I can think of worse days for Apple for this to be announced. I mean, may, their, uh, probably their worst earnings report ever day, which is today, would probably be <laughs> maybe the worst. I can think of another Apple day. Apple cares a lot about your privacy and security. In fact, Megan, you said an interesting thing. You said, well, how could Apple let this happen? Yeah. But that's the problem with bugs. You don't get to pick right. <laughs> where the bugs are going to happen. Uh, I'm sure Apple spends extra time uh, on privacy and security, um, but in this case, you know, bugs happen, um, and so they're going to fix it. They're going to—I think they're—they're they're, they're fixed. They're doing everything they can, which is disabling it now and fixing it this week. That's about as good as you can get. But and in future, if you're going to tweet it, tell Apple first. <laughs> but I have a question. I mean, why? How could that be? Like, how is there even the feature to automatically answer a FaceTime call? Like, why does that exist? Like, didn't that uh, didn't code have to be written for a well, call to be automatically answered? Remember the scenario is you have to, and this is why it's hard to find bugs. Mm -hmm. You had to do something that Apple and no user would reasonably do, which is add yourself to the group. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, I'm already on the group. I'm, and then you add yourself and then answer the call yourself as the group call. And so Apple would have had to test that. Now, most companies, uh, including Apple, have professional testers whose job it is to do stupid things like that. They also use software to try to find uh, bugs like that. But you software is not perfect, and you can't find every bug uh, ever. And so things, I don't think it's Apple's to blame at this. Right. Um, these things happen. Uh, really what you have to do is, is measure how responsive a company is to... Uh, now, what we don't know, and maybe somebody's told them about this months ago and Apple didn't fix it. We don't know that, but... We do know that the minute it became publicly known, Apple immediately turned off the FaceTime feature and uh, and says we're going to fix it fast.
And it's just slipped through. You can't test every scenario, and especially if it's a weird scenario. Right, exactly. And Scooter X says, you define the accounts and the phone number, you can be reached via FaceTime. I know, and I did that, because I was just like, okay, you know, I, if someone wants to reach me by FaceTime, go ahead, I'll put all right. my contact in there. So you did. I didn't have to do so, that. So it, it isn't that you're answering the phone, it's before you answer, but somebody is answering it. Somebody else in the group is answering. Right. And that's the real bug, is that anyone, and it, actually this is a more significant bug, if you're making a group call, anyone in that group call can answer and all of you will be picked up. Mm -hmm. That is a big bug. Right. And perhaps, I mean, we could you could say Apple should have caught that, but it's this stuff is hard. So, And the only thing that could come out in the future, which as far as I know hasn't come out, is that someone did notify them and they hadn't done anything about it. Like if that comes out, like someone, right. like a like security, if a security researcher, researcher says, well, we told someone, them this two months ago. Yeah, and they didn't and, do anything and about it. And believe me, that will not happen because this is the kind of thing that Apple is immediately going to fix. The last thing Apple wants is somebody to announce it publicly. They right. would, if had they heard about this, uh, they would have fixed it immediately. So they're mm -hmm. fixing it immediately, as as quickly as they can. We're fortunate they can. There's sometimes these things, ha uh, these bugs exist. This happens with Microsoft all the time, and it takes a long time to fix it because mm -hmm. fixing it might break something else and so forth. Anyway, um, we wanted to let you know right away, out of the box. And the, but the other feature is that that this is a feature with Google, like with Duo. Um, the Google's calling, is that the calling Google Duo? Is that what it's called? You can do that. You can like send audio. Before yeah, they call it knock-knock. Yeah. <laughs> and then also with Amazon's drop-in. Like some yeah. people consider this a feature that yeah. they want. Drop-in lets you reason. just drop in. Nobody has to answer and you yeah. can just see what's going on. And when they announced that, everybody said, you'd be crazy to turn that on. Right. And Amazon said, well, make sure you only allow that with people you really like. Right. And then, yeah, Duo does the knock-knock thing, which is kind of weird. This is why I now have a case mm -hmm. with a lid because mm -hmm. that's, uh, you know, covering up the front-facing camera, and then I keep my phone face down. So they might get audio, but it'll, but they're not going to get a video. Mm -hmm. and believe yes, Allo is the call, not Duo. And no, no, Duo is their calling. Is oh, what's Allo? Allo is a messaging app that also does calls. Oh. Believe me, don't get started. This is, a, this is not the show to explain Google's messaging okay. strategy because... No one knows. What are we covering today? We're talking about notifications that I are good. I love this subject. <laughs> I love this subject. I do too, because I, I spent a lot of time telling you, oh, disable all your notifications, get rid of them. Um, but some are useful. So there was an article uh, on Medium, which I went through, mm -hmm. on how to make your iPhone less uh, of a time suck. Mm -hmm. And one of the things was, and I actually did this, and I do encourage you to do this, Go through all your notifications. And Apple does not make this super easy because, well, I mean, at least they're all in one place. But each each notification is per app, right? So go through all of these and start by turning them all off. You know, you notice I have a lot of notifications that are still on because whenever you install a new app, by default, right, mm -hmm. uh, those notifications, it'll ask you, do you want to allow them? But but only the uh, they're on by default unless you say otherwise. So I really do think that's a good idea so maybe if you want to start this just go through one by one you'll see the the, the notification this is a, on an ipad but it's exactly the same on a uh, on a uh, iPhone. iphone um you this the master switches up here at the top allow notifications notice everything goes away so that's what i would recommend doing is going through everything and then do what we're about to do which is go through and say well some are useful for instance Air France. Now, I wouldn't allow this unless I was flying Air France. Mm -hmm. But if you're flying on an airline, uh, tomorrow we're flying Alaska, uh, you would want to have that turned on. You might even want to just say, turn off Air France, and I'll remember to turn that on when I'm going to fly Air France. Uh, so that's there are certainly notifications that are useful. In fact, that's one of the benefits of turning them all off. Then the notifications you get will be something you want. I, I have another way of doing it. Um, which is, you're doing it the Marie, Marie Kondo way. Turn them all off, find out which one Doesn't sparks spark joy. joy. <laughs> but there's another way that this was new um, where you can go through like and just look at your notifications. So You can do it from notifications, yeah, that's so, right. So um, here I mostly, okay, here's one. Here's a good one. It says coriander seeds. Um, I at one point set a reminder for myself um, every time I was at Whole Foods <laughs> or gonna, when I was at Whole Foods. That's a nice one. Those location-based reminders. Yeah. It's great. You get to you don't see coriander seeds until you get to right. Whole Foods. And so, unfortunately, I pass Whole Foods oh. every day when I drop my kids <laughs> off at school. So um, 
I can go here. So if you, sh I'll show show my screen again. Yeah. I looked at all these. They're Whole all fine. paycheck. We call um, it. Yeah. So I go to here, and I could either just clear this notification so that it'll come up again, which apparently I've been doing. I can view it fully, or I can manage it. And so then I can here, I can deliver quietly, which means um, it's not going to come up every single time or make any noise. Or I can just turn it off. Like just turn, and this turns off all notifications from reminders. So I don't really want to do that because I like my reminders. See, that's so, the problem yeah. is, yeah. I guess I'll deliver it quietly and see what happens You can't there. be as granular. Um, so as calm, like. I like those med uh, those meditation. Here's one, um, my... Uh, Amazon apps, like here's a great deal we picked for you, stylus pen. I don't want those, so I can go to management, and I actually don't want any more Amazon notifications. So I turn them off, and then it turns off all of those notifications. Here's an example of one I really don't want, but maybe you do. Uh, if you subscribe to a YouTube channel, you'll get notified a lot by YouTube. You don't want you don't want YouTube notifications unless you really do. So that would be a really good candidate. Yeah, just say. And you know, you know how I noticed that? I got a stack of YouTube notifications in here. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Showtime Anytime. I don't really want to be notified. Now, you may say, but I have to know when the next Ray Donovan's out. Mm -hmm. So there are. this is something you have to do on your own. Uh, I, Apple News will notify you until the cows come home. Mm -hmm. 22 notifications from an hour ago. Four notifications from three hours ago. 18 notifications at 5 a.m. I think Apple News is a good candidate to turn off, but you want to know when there's breaking news. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of, I think, very good breaking news alternatives to Apple News, which really is kind of maybe a little too much. Uh, one is CNN. Mm -hmm. Now, they also have a couple of different levels. They have one, where, and I would just set it to the highest level, which is only notify me if the world is about to end. New York Times also has one. Your favorite news source will have something. Uh -huh. In my opinion, Apple News is too aggressive about the notifications. And this is, by the way, something important. There's a reason for that. And this is why it's really important to think about mm -hmm. notifications for yourself. Notifications, everybody knows this in the app world, are the best way to get your attention to get you to use an app. So every app, however dumb, however dopey, however useless a notification is, every app wants to put notifications on your screen. That's how, in, in the Apple world, it's the best and only way, really, to say, look at me, look at me, look at me. Mm -hmm. So it it really is a great idea to go through all your notifications and and at least decide which ones you want. And I would say turn off. There's no reason two dots the game needs to notify me. There's nothing, but they want that, right? Because that's how they get your attention. And periodically they say, oh, you haven't played in a while. Think about what your notifications uh, should be and what you need uh, notifications for news is a big one i i want to get news notifications mm -hmm. so that's a good example of uh, you may be picking picking your news source for your notifications now i'm sure apple news or i hope apple news if, if in the settings somewhere will have a way to say what kind yeah manage notifications you can say <laughs> maybe this is one of the reasons i got 21 <laughs> notifications because you have is because i have them turned on so Maybe another way to do that would be to use Apple News, but just say, look, I only want notifications from big news sources and then see what you get. There is some ex trial and error that's going to be involved in here. So I'll just say, I only want to get a notification from the New York Times. Now, I have to say, in all likelihood, I'm going to get more notifications than I want uh, because that is kind of, you know, a great way to get, uh, you know, real estate on the user screen is to put a pop-up notification. So in that case, you may end up wanting to just turn off notifications entirely. So I mentioned calm before and I have that notification in there. Meditate, sponsor, calm, but yeah, but they're, relax. They're, what does it tell you? Something breathe kind of sort of? Uh, it it says a mindfulness reminder. And I had it, I said it this, this so that it would remind me every morning to meditate. Um, yeah. I usually ignore it, but sometimes, uh, but the quote is always good. The future is always beginning now. Um, another one that I really like, which is another sponsor, is the Eero notification, which I turned on too. And I don't really think this one is trying to, this isn't one a good example of no, trying to get into. This is actually a security notification. One of the things you can tell the Eero is, please notify me if you see a device on my network you haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. That is a great notification. Right. Because it means somebody's joined your network. Most of the time, oh, Michael had a friend mm -hmm. over, his phone joined the network, fine. Right. 
But if somebody that you don't know is on your network, you'd like to know that. So that's an example of a notification yeah. that would be very useful. Exactly. But the key here is to get the fewest possible mm -hmm. notifications so that the good ones, the important ones, right. stand out. Yeah. And I like to use that notification just to sort of judge my kids' friends. Like, what's the time period between when it's they true. enter the house and so when they room. join the Wi-Fi network? It's usually like it averages maybe five to eight minutes. But there's so many apps that sh you don't need. It. For instance, Apple TV keyboard. Do I really need banners and sounds coming oh. from the Apple TV well, keyboard? Well, if you want to be reminded that to use it, to use it yeah. <laughs> Like on the other hand, not, like they don't tell you anything besides that. <laughs> Microsoft's Authenticator, I do want. In fact, that's one you really want to turn on. If you use an Authenticator mm -hmm. that pops up notifications, as Microsoft's Authenticator does, many do. LastPasses does, Duos does, where it says, hey, are you trying to log in, approve or deny? Mm -hmm. You really want that notification. So that's one where you go in. And now the other thing that's important to, to think about is, well, do you want sounds? I never want badges. I don't like no. all of those badges. That's I, anxiety. Yeah. You see provision. badges on your screen and it's like, oh, there's undone. So I think the best thing, something like this, I would like a sound and I would like maybe a lock screen. Notif you, you understand the different kinds of banners. And here's one that you really might want to change, which is on something like this, I don't want it to go away after a, a second or two. I want it to be persistent. So there are some things you might want to go in here and amp up. But uh, badges I always turn off for something like an authenticator. Persistent is something to turn on. Now, notice I have as my default, because I use this iPad on the show, I don't show previews. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that? Yeah, that uh, that just means that you can say, I got. it says I got a message, but it doesn't say the message. Right. So, so if you look, in fact, if I go now and look at my, uh, at my notifications, because I'm not showing previews, and, and, and that's, you know, for my own privacy, I don't want you necessarily to see... My showtime, I wonder what my showtime at any time of notification is <laughs> I actually. I don't want to know. Maybe you don't want to know that. So <laughs> so those things, look at all these notifications that I really don't need. Screen time, you might want, do I want my bicycle to tell me it's time to ride? No. <laughs> Skype notifications. Now, that's an important thing. FaceTime, Skype, anything that you may be getting phone calls on, mm -hmm. you might want notifications if you use that regularly. Uh, post snap. That is an, a postcard mailing application. Do I really need notifications? Time to send a postcard. Yeah. Some of these, uh, you know, Keybase is a chat application. You definitely, on anything where it's mm -hmm. communication, you probably want that. Now, here's one that's maybe a little bit more controversial. I turn off mail notifications. Mm -hmm. Do you turn those on? Oh, hey, the new Shameless <gasps> ep Season 9, Episode 9 is out. I wish Showtime had notified me of that. See, this is the funny thing. I don't watch that show. I've never watched that show. I don't like that show. So this is a notification that counts as completely useless. It knows that I love that show. And I've been Maybe you thought I episode. should tell you episode nine's out. But how do, if you've never watched it, how do you know you don't like it? I watched it in the first season. I watched several episodes. So that's not my cup of tea to watch a dysfunctional family. I have enough of that at home. Shameless. <laughs> Shameless. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, good to know. Yeah. Um, so also notifications aren't just in the notifications center. Too. Oh, That's this is another thing. point. Yeah. Like if you want to adjust the kind of notifications you get from like a text message or, um, or even an email, you can adjust, you have to adjust those in the sound area. So did you know that you can like customize your vibration message yeah you can have dit, 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 dot 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 dit, yeah. Dit, yeah. or you can even make it up so um that's in set you want to show that since you have an ipad um oh is oh, it yeah, more here, there you is are. it more oh. fun with the ipad well, I, you know so you can do text tone so normally you just choose a tone right i this is boring please folks don't choose default no choose something interesting like can you hear that why can't i is it is my oh there, there it is go. like hello or mm-hmm I used popcorn for a while, but that got very annoying. There's also uh, ringtones, obviously. Those would be bad for notifications. But what I... Where is... Where, it's where, sound and haptics text tone. Sound and haptics. Haptics. Sound. Is it in accessibility? It might be in accessibility. Let's, let's look in accessibility. Um, oh, maybe it's not on the iPad. Oh, because it the, wouldn't make sense on the iPad. The iPad doesn't vibrate. Oh, it's only okay, so, on a phone, so you better okay, show this. Okay, yeah. so here we are. You can show on mine. Um, Darn it, I wanted a vibration. I know. Um, yeah, Good vibrations. That's interesting that the... Why doesn't the iPad vibrate? Feels like it should. Because it's not in your pocket. 
That's true. Some really That's big why. pockets. Um, okay, so text tone is here. Um, and uh, vibration, you can do all of these kinds of vibrations. But then you can tap your own out, which yeah, is fun. Yeah, so create a new vibration. Yeah. So this is, I'm going to make this just for Leo, and I'm going to do 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 This would be so good if you knew Morse code, because you yeah. could have it go L-E-O. And then um, you can... I wish I knew Morse code. Play it. That'd be, that'd be yeah, so useful. <laughs> can you hear that? <laughs> ah, Scooter X has explained to us why I need an Apple TV keyboard. See, this is why I you have to think about I explained to you it. why you needed an Apple keyboard. Why? Before, because when you're using the remote, it'll come up and say you can... Enter I've the password that. here. You listen to Scooter X more than you listen to me, Leo. <laughs> Did you say it here? I said it here. I wasn't listening. <laughs> Maybe I didn't say it as clearly as I need to. No, but. so there are good reasons. Apparently Scooter X didn't hear you either. Uh, there are good reasons why you might. See, yeah. this is why it's hard... To turn them off. So maybe my method of turning them all off isn't the best way to do it. Maybe turn them off when you get one that you really go, well, I don't, I didn't want to know That's that. That's also what I said, Leo. I know you did. And I'm, <laughs> I'm now saying that probably is a better way, come to think of it, because you don't really know what, why it would notify you. Yeah, it's right? true. Yeah, yeah, you don't know. Calendars, for instance, I always want calendar notifications, but I use Fantastical. So the truth is, I don't want notifications from Apple's calendar at all, because that way I get double but I do want them from Fantastical, my 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 preferred calendar. So I'll turn those on. And again, you know, I don't need badges. We don't need those stinking badges. So as I was saying, you can then use the new vibration that you've created. So I have a custom one for my husband. So what does it sound like? Um, we can't tell because it's vibrating. I know. Can you? You can't put it, hear that. Touch it to the microphone. It'll okay. Like put it right here, maybe. Bum, bum. Yeah, that's good. So that's great. If See it's now in your you pocket, know. You know. It's time for a shave, right? And I'm a haircut. Make, yeah. So a custom vibration that you could assign to certain people, so you know. I like that. Their vibration. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel your vibration. I feel <laughs> you. Uh, yeah. So this is, uh, you know, you, you really. I think a great thing. For instance, you know that I use Day One to journal. Mm -hmm. I want notifications because one of the things they say is every day time to journal. And they say fun things like, you just, uh, you're just you at a new spot. Would you like to write something about that? So there are definitely reasons you want notifications. But I think the key to here is you want notifications as limited as you can so that you can pay attention to the ones you care right. about. You, do you like weather notifications? Nope. I, the weather is so mild here. Like I'd I'll tell you, the one I do is Dark Sky has an umbrella notification. So it will tell you if you should... That if it's going to rain in the next hour and you should bring an umbrella. I find that that kind of useful. But this is an example where you would turn on notifications in the in on on the settings, the general settings, but the, or the uh, iPhone or iPad settings. But then you would want to go into the app. Let's say, do I I I don't I don't know if I want a daily summary. You would want a severe weather alert, right? Sure. Umbrella reminder. I like that. Sunscreen reminder. So I've got these all turned on because I want to get. You know, I want to know if it's about to rain, if I should wear an umbrella, if I should put on sunscreen, if it's about to tornado. So those things are are actually, to me, useful. But again, I like it that this app lets me, this is Dark Sky, my favorite weather app, lets me granularize those in addition to what Apple does. Because Apple merely says, are they on or are they off? Right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I was on the Clockwise podcast, um, and Dan Morin had this one recommendation. We were talking about notifications. I love Dan Morin, by the I way. I do, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, he has an IFTTT recommendation, if this, then that, so that when his, or his echo timer goes off, he gets a notification on his phone Very or his nice. watch. I had that for a while, too. Yeah, yeah so because, yeah. you know, you'll set a timer for the other room oven, or, yeah. the oven or whatever, and then you'll walk out and you don't hear it. And Very then you'll get idea. the notification. Yeah. Um, there's also an, I mean, IFTTT, you can do all kinds of really useful notifications. That's actually, uh, that's, a, that's a black diamond tip. That's a more expert tip, which is use if this, then that, and use its notifications mm -hmm. in your iPhone to, to really extend what notifications right. it can tell you about. Somebody just opened the garage or, right. uh, you know, it's time to go to work, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Those, that's really handy. Yeah. Blink your hue lights when your Amazon Alexa the timer hits zero. I like that. So, yeah. So if you get tired of like all the, you know, iPhone notifications or you just want to be sort of unplugged from your iPhone and you have Hue lights or they have it with Senglid lights or any kind of lights. Yeah, the lights will turn off and on when something happens or they'll turn red when something happens. 
I know Stacey Higginbotham has like, I don't know if she still has this, but she had like her lights would turn red if when her podcast was uploaded. See, that's so, great. Or we should do that here uploaded. when it wasn't uploaded. Yeah. That's... Well, I have notifications for our podcast. I have that through uh, Pocket Casts and then I have a backup through IFTTT so that I get a notification when um, when all my shows get go up so that I know Kevin's doing his job. It, it, this is a, it, this is puns. this is good cuz you know I, I you you do want to spend some time thinking about it. You do want to you know most of us have tons of notifications and we just live with them. Mm -hmm. You do want to start thinking about my trip at notification says we're going to you know I'm going to be leaving on a plane tomorrow. So that's a useful notification. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand trip it sometimes will say hey you could get a better price or you know maybe it's time to to you know do something and and I, some of those are not useful. So Definitely check the application to see if you can restrict those notifications, and you know go through these and and don't don't put it off. Like I you know I don't I really don't want Apple TV notifications. That's another one where yeah, Apple, tell me like football scores yeah, and stuff. I yeah, don't yeah, like I don't that. I don't want to know that. So uh, I'm going to turn that off from uh, from the uh, settings because I know you see oh, they're all turned on again. I turned everything off. I went through everything and turned everything off. Let's just see how my notifications look here. Because I think what happens is they kind of get turned back on. This is a bug, by the way, that's been happening lately. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. uh, it's thinking. I have noticed that too. Yeah. Uh, I've gone to settings and it's not responsive right now. This is still responsive, so yeah. I can close it. <laughs> close a few things. Uh-huh. Let's uh, close it again, wait a second, and then reopen it, and maybe it'll be responsive now. Yeah. So you see, most of these are off. Uh, see, but I think you get a new app, like Big Oven, and all of a sudden it wants to tell you, mm -hmm. Blockswave, that was my pick, but you know, all the notifications are from Blockswave. Hey, we got a great deal on sounds now, mm -hmm. Apple Books. I don't need notifications on that. So somehow these get, you know, as you add apps, they get turned back on. And when you're adding apps, you're usually doing it quickly to because you're right, on the show, you say, so you're like, they yes, do yes, ask yes, you, yes. But like, yeah. do I really need Drive Google Drive notifications? I, I don't think so. I do want notifications for my Eero. We were talking about mm -hmm. your network, and that's that's a useful uh, notification. FaceTime and they'll let you, Eero will let you decide which notifications you want. Also, oh, I was going to say mail. I don't want mail notifications. Yeah, me neither. Because we get too much mail. Yeah. Uh, some mail apps will let you be more granular in the mm -hmm. notifications. Apple Mail, you could say, I only want VIP notifications. Mm -hmm. That might be a better way to handle that. Uh, this is a new app. I don't want notifications from fiery feeds. And you can adjust them via, you know, for your Apple Watch versus what you get on your right. iPhone right. as well. Right, that's nice. So I think this is a good topic. People mm -hmm. uh, probably put up with a lot of stimulus from their phone. Mm -hmm. We know that's not good for your health. You're constantly... You know, it's not good for your focus, your attention. It's a good idea. Maybe tonight when you get home from work uh, or if you're home now, go through all your notifications mm -hmm. and turn them off unless you absolutely know you need them. Right. Unless so many are on. I don't, I don't know who these people are. <laughs> why, why find my iPhone? I noticed that has notifications. Is there a reason? Well, if you get a sound, like if you Ah, um, perfect your, example. Yeah. See? Yeah. So that's the, that's sometimes you don't right. want to just go in there and, no, and don't really turn that one off. Do I want sounds? But I don't need badges, but I do want sounds. I, I probably don't need these either, right? Mm -hmm. I don't. I could just turn off these and just get the sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could, that might yeah. be all right, right? Yeah. So I had a very simplify. useful Find My iPhone experience. My uh, son uh, left his iPhone at the park, and then I looked up Find My iPhone, and it was at the Petaluma Police Department. <laughs> The police had uh, picked it up. And as long as your son's not it. with it, that's probably okay. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't with it. Yeah. It was good. That's um, really cool. Yeah, yeah. And then you, did you go down to the police department and get mm -hmm. his phone? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Mm -hmm. That is a great experience. Yeah, it was yeah. a great experience. You know what I'm going to do uh, when I get home after you, I do my notifications? Do? I'm going to go for a run with my aftershocks. Oh, man. Oh, can we? Is it finally time to talk about these? It's finally so time. we we've we all got our aftershocks how long a couple a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. and i'm gonna admit i was skeptical at first aftershocks is a headphone technology that's really designed for af active people uh, athletic people it's an open ear design because it uses bone conductance now when i when i first saw bone conductance back in the 70s remember the bone phone 
it just it, to me it just didn't sound great. This is state of the art, and I am thrilled not only with the sound quality but the convenience. Let me let me show you. Let me put these aftershocks on. Okay, so they go over your ear. They don't go in your ear. Notice. So it, you can hear people talking to you, mm -hmm. but the sound quality is great. And mm -hmm. this is all; these are also my new favorite Bluetooth headsets because you can very comfortably wear these. You cannot get them off. You can run. You can exercise with them. And if you want to talk to somebody, the sound is great. Not only do they sound great, but you sound great to them in the phone call. I am blown away. A-F-T-E-R-S-H-O-K-Z or Z uses a patented bone conduction technology they sit over your cheekbone. They don't, they, by the way, the, another reason I'm not a fan of earbuds is after, they're uncomfortable after a mm -hmm. while, right? Well, no, and also if you're running, you sweat. When you sweat inside your ear, they fall out of your ear. Right. And these don't fall out. They, you can still hear. So the, these go right to your inner ear. They bypass your eardrum. They're lightweight. There's a titanium band around it that's really there to keep, to keep them positioned and uh, keep them on comfortably. Wireless Bluetooth 4.1 connectivity. They do something called multi-point pairing, which I like. You can have two different devices feed to it, one at a time, but you can switch back and forth. IP55 certified, so that means they're sweat, dust, and moisture proof, which means you can wear them in the rain. You can sweat on them. They're really the best workout. I wear them on my bicycle when I'm riding. You get six hours of continuous music and calls on a single charge, 10-day standby time. And they charge up really fast, about an hour and a half. Plus, you get a hassle-free two-year warranty. Let me show you a couple more things. On the side of uh, this version of the Aftershocks, and there are a couple of different versions, we've got a button here. I can call up Siri. I can choose the next song. I can pause. That's actually the most convenient thing because uh, if I want to, you know, stop the... I listen to audiobooks on this all day long. I want to stop it and talk to somebody I can. But the best thing is... These are safe to use in conditions where any of your headphones would not be. If you're running on the on the street, if you're walking around the house, uh, the fact that you you know, and notice I'm still wearing my in-ear monitors for the show. Uh, I can keep my hearing aids in; it, it doesn't in interfere with those. You can hear people talking to you, so they're safer for driving. They're safer for outdoor activities, uh, and, and running and biking where you're in traffic. This is these are just absolutely a must. I am a big fan of the Aftershocks. Now, we have a special deal too, the Aftershocks Tech Bundle that includes the Trex Air, a pop socket for your phone, a large portable storage case, and a portable power bank and travel tumbler insulator. How about that? What a gift this would be. Maybe for a graduate, uh for the jock in your family. Let me the other thing that's cool, I first thought, oh, um, it's going to bother Lisa when I listen, because sometimes I listen to uh, books at night mm -hmm. when she's asleep, and I, and I was afraid it was going to bother her. So uh, I'm going to play the book that I'm listening to right now on my Aftershocks. Right now it's coming out of my uh, my phone, just to prove that it's coming out of somewhere. Paired. Now I'm listening to my book. Can you hear it? No. No. Doesn't. <laughs> but I can. And the quality is better than almost anything I've used. It's a really good quality, particularly the bass, because it's going through your cheek, through your bone, right to your inner ear. The bass is excellent on these. So I am a big fan. I think you will be too, especially if you're a runner, uh, if you wear them around the house. Frankly, I'm going to continue to listen to my book while you go ahead and do the show. If you want $50 off the tech bundle, the Trex Air, the Pop Socket, the large portable storage case, the portable power bank, and the travel tumbler insulator, you get 50 bucks off when you go to iostoday.aftershocks.com and you have to use the code iOS today. iostoday.aftershocks.com and shocks is spelled with a Z, A F T E R S H O K Z, code iOS today. And you get 50 bucks off that tech bundle, which is a great deal. Oh, my daughter's calling. Just go ahead with the show okay. and I'll, uh, I'll just talk, talk to her. Okay. I'll talk to and Abby. I can't hear. Great. Hey, Abby, how you doing? Oh, I, I have to apologize. I'm on the air right now. Maybe we should talk later. Okay. <laughs> I was just demonstrating because we were doing an ad for the Aftershocks right now, how I can talk to you on the phone and still talk to Megan and do a, a show. How do I sound? Do I sound pretty good? I sound... I, yeah, does it sound like... Because the, the microphone is nowhere near my mouth, but you can hear me clearly. Yeah. Thank you, Abby. Love you. All right. Bye-bye.
they are really amazing. I have to say, this is, I'm never going to wear anything that falls out of your ear yeah. again. I'm never going to wear a blue, weird Bluetooth headset. I Sometimes when I'm expecting a call, I just walk around the house with these on because they're so comfortable you don't even notice them. And then I'm ready for the call and I mm -hmm. just tap it and I'm, I'm good to go. Aftershucks. Anyway, I, I went on and on and I probably shouldn't have, but I really love these. I do too, and I'm super picky about headphones. Yeah. I, these are the first ones I've just felt like, gosh, I could wear these all the time. Yeah. They're like, really yeah. comfortable. Okay. Nice uh, yeah. iOS 12.2 public beta is out. Ooh, some interesting revelations thanks to Stephen Trotton Smith. Uh, yes. There are some, uh, like, that'll tell us about the future iPods and, um, I mean, AirPods and stuff like that. But but there's some good features that they meant to release um, that aren't a secret, too. Um, there uh, is a redesign in the wallet, and it lets you, like, see more detail of your transactions, which I think is interesting, like the Apple wallet. I, have, I haven't installed the beta because I only have one iPhone. No, we don't like the beta. Yeah. We want to just be normal like everybody else. Um, there's We've some... We've had bad experiences. <laughs> There's this is going to be interesting. New air quality um, details in Apple Maps, so you can open Apple Maps and automatically see what the air quality does. I know, like we all downloaded extra air quality apps yeah. when the fires in California were here, and apparently they're not going anywhere. So knowing what the air quality is outside big is deal. helpful. Very big deal. Um, now there's going to be a new Apple TV remote, um, and it'll include the access to AirPlay to so that you can connect your phone to new phone, new TVs like Samsung, that, all that in, all that stuff that was announced nice. at CES. Nice. Um, and then just a few new, new icons. So I'm looking forward to it. I might install the public beta on the iPad when I get it back from Jason. I still now have his Pixel Three. We should mention okay. that as I alluded to there is and this always happens with the base some code in there that implies there may be new ipads coming iPod, airpods ipads 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 three new ipads according oh. to stephen trotton smith oh. you didn't you didn't see that i think you? i saw that there were new there was code that showed that there might be new AirPods. airpods as well that's right that's right but yeah apparently there's a here it is stephen trotton smith yes and there's the code oh. In the source of, uh, there you go. So f actually it looks like four new iPads, Ooh. four numbers not seen before. And I would love it if they did a mini. Wouldn't that be mm -hmm. awesome? Uh, we were wondering if the mini was gone for good. So, so without Face ID, so maybe the, like a lower price point? Yeah, probably, right? And then an iPod Touch with no Touch ID nor Face ID? Yeah, oh, that's what the fourth one is. Three iPads and a new iPad touch iPod. ipod touch and i thought that was kind of interesting uh uh the reason uh the people buy ipod touches i think you tell me is because you want to get a kid something that can do music and apps but you don't want to pay for a phone subscription for them and so i thought it was kind of interesting that they want to do an ipod touch i guess this keeps the price down but i'm wondering also for privacy reasons mm. they don't want to you know have kids enter their fingerprints or their face id so that would be my guess. So the the models range from iPad 11.1 to iPad 11.4, two of which are Wi-Fi, two of which are cellular. They do not correspond to any known iPad models. Trout and Smith is one speculating that it might be a new iPad Mini, a Mini Five. I would I I hope the Mini is is still around. And then this iPod Nine, comma one, iPad iPod. I, Mixing them up. HomePod, this is a, AirPod. This is an iPod 9.1, which would be that seventh uh, generation iPod Touch without Bluetooth. I don't know how he knows whether or not it has Bluetooth and all of that, but I, yeah, I can see I how he could see from the code. This is actually text in on iOS 12.2 that says iPad 11 Wi Fi, iPad 11 cellular. So. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, with our increasing. Uh, dedication to privacy, maybe an iPod touch. If you are getting more suspicious of the cell phone companies, I know I told you Joseph Cox, uh, security researcher for and writer for Motherboard, he uses an iPod. He doesn't have a cell phone. Yeah, because it's more secure, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, as long as you don't put any apps on it. <laughs> well, it's just, it's more secure from the cell phone company tracking. That's right. That's right. Or telcos, as right. they call it overseas. And, and uh, there, there's another uh, piece of data that uh, seven new iPads were registered with the Eurasian Economic Commission. That's kind of like an FCC registration in Europe. 
Um, so all of this indicates we're it's maybe fairly close. I don't know what the time frame would be. I don't think we're talking October. I think we're talking probably June mm. or or sooner. It's time. So for keep a new your eye peed, peered, <laughs> peeled. What is this? What is the phrase? What is it? Humans say. <laughs> I believe we say keep your eyes peeled. Peered. And it's it's peeled. Peeled. But why? It's disgusting it's when you disgusting. think about it. It's disgusting. That's, that's, I don't understand you humans at all. <laughs> uh, here's some other news that came out yesterday that was also buried by the uh, FaceTime bug. Um, cheddar, you know, you heard of the cheddar? I do know the cheddar. And uh, I know what story you're talking about because they only, they only had one story this year. <laughs> right. No, that's not true. Uh, they're a millennial news site. Yes, because um, all millennials love cheese. <laughs> they... Uh, said that Apple's planning a Netflix-like game subscription service. So, um, like, all the games you can play, I guess, if you subscribe. Um, they have five people familiar with the matter have so, said this. Uh, what we could uh, kind of read between the lines, those five people are probably game developers who've been approached by Apple for this service. So, they mm -hmm. still haven't set prices. They haven't yeah. said even when, but second half maybe of the year. Mm -hmm. Someday soon... But I wonder what kind of games those are going to be. Like, are they going to be like Candy Crush-like games? They have to be casual games because, uh, I mean, I think. I don't know. But they can't really be like Candy Crush because Candy Crush is free, right, with ads and stuff. So it's like, you, how do you convince people who are used to really in-app purchases this. and yeah. ads so, so to then pay? Microsoft does this. Sony does this. NVIDIA does this. But these are with, you know, console or desktop games. These are with real... Mm -hmm. You know, sixty dollar games. Um, I don't know. Is, is it iPad games? I don't understand really what what this would be. Yeah, I don't either. But it'll be interesting because I mean, if it were like games like Mon independent games like Monument Valley or some of the beautiful games that we've. But there's they're five bucks. I mean. Right, but if you could pay like ten dollars a month to get as many as you want, <laughs> it'd have to be a buck a month. Then maybe. A buck a month. That'd for be as really many cheap games as you want. because it's one. You know, it's it's one thing to pay as I do for Microsoft's uh, Game Pass. You pay about the cost of, of of two games a year, right? A year, and so if you bought a game a month, you'd be save, saving a lot of money, and that maybe is. But if you bought a game a month on the iPad, and the games are four or five dollars, mm -hmm. you have to make the subscription cost right ten dollars a year. Well, I think that most, well, I don't know. I think we're seeing more games that are like nine ninety nine. Are we? Um, yeah. Yeah. I not a lot, though. Yeah. Maybe, I, I don't know, maybe there's all of a sudden going to be $50 games on the iPad, and Apple wants to uh, make those less uh, expensive. But if I there are people it. that get as much entertainment and relaxation out of playing iPad uh, and iPhone games instead of Netflix? Certainly. Like, it's not, it's, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that the cost has to be very, very right. low because iPad games are are similarly low, right. so you can't uh, you can't charge. As I said, I, I can't remember what Microsoft's Game Pass was, but I think it's a hundred bucks a year mm -hmm. uh, for unlimited games. Not every game's in it, but unlimited games. And since you'd spend sixty dollars for any one game, that's a good deal. Mm -hmm. uh, other news: Apple is now requiring app subscriptions to show the full cost before you sign up. Thank you. So instead of that kind of, you know, it's like it's free or the subs one week trial and then you don't know what it, you know, automatically you just got charged for the entire year. So there's, they're now requiring that. Um, and I can't help but feel like we had something to do with that. Just our because, subscription, yeah. our yearly subscription, turn it off. Yeah, I feel like show. they listen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Apple, for listening to us. Um, okay, what else do I have? Oh, Apple uh, has said that they're going to pay the photographers uh, in their shot on the iPhone competition, they had that competition, and <laughs> yes, um, they good. Were That's just going to give them, uh, you know, uh, exposure. But they said they would actually pay. Is that a now. change, or they just neglected to mention that in the announcement? Uh, unclear. They didn't say it. They added it to the announcement. Okay. People, they made the announcement, and they said, you know, you would get exposure. It on probably these. was always their intent to pay people, right? I mean, come on, they're Apple. Yeah, like why wouldn't they? <laughs> But, um, yeah. So Whatever the going know. rate yes. is for that, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, certainly a lot of photographers would be thrilled to be featured mm -hmm. on an iPhone billboard. Mm -hmm. But also, if you do it for a living, you kind of want to get paid. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Uh, I have a product I want to show off um, that uh, oh. S-Bode. Have you heard of S-Bode speakers? No. 
I like these. They are um, waterproof. Um, again, I don't know the exact IP, whatever, but it might be in the link. That and I you could play touch football with them. <laughs> you could. Um, yeah. They're sturdy, and you can sync them for stereo sound. You can sync them both so that they're, um, you know, surround Well, it's good they're sound. waterproof then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if you're outside, you have one, one side of the pool. Oh, they have a nice lady in there. They do have a nice yeah. lady. A really nice lady. She sounds in there. really good. Power on. Power on. And then they're automatic. Can we rock out? Let's play we something. Could. I want to hear what it sounds like. Um, yeah, Fifty dollars so, each, and mm -hmm. if you got two, a hundred bucks, right? Mm -hmm. And then S B O D E Spode S B O D E Spode Spode Okay. Spode. Okay. Ready? Turn it up. Turn them up. Turn them way up. Why are you listening to this? This is very old. It's Weezer. Oh, it's okay, the that, Weezer version. Yeah. Here. Oh, now we're going. Now we're talking a little mm -hmm. eurythmic section. Oh, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. No, that's Weezer. Again, um, I Again with the Weezer. <laughs> you only listen to Weezer covers? <laughs> Weezer has a new album um, that is all covers. Um, I highly recommend it. I don't know. I'd rather listen to the Eurythmics version. My Sharona? Um, this is Take On Me. Take On Me. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Um. Um, I, these, you can use these for phone calls if you like to have your phone call in stereo. Um, I like the sound. Good for the summer, which is not for a while. But nice. <laughs> the S Bode speakers. S Bode. S Bode. I don't know if you say Spode or Esbode. Esbode. Um, you can take them camping. Spodeo do. I like them because I've seen a lot of different speakers that promise that they sync together for surround sound and they don't really work. And it's really difficult. And I found these easily because um, I don't have Sonos or anything. Um, I just have the one speaker. Hmm. Hmm. So Esbode. I've been talking a lot. I think I need a calming break. Oh, fortunately, <laughs> our sponsor... Calm.com is very calming. Calm.com. We should listen to a calm, calm on the speakers. Ooh. Ooh, I love it. With calm, uh, you get a variety, not just meditation. Of course, there's lots of great meditation, including the daily calm. But calm also helps you sleep and relax Welcome in general. To the daily calm. I'm Tamara Levitt. Hi, Tamara. And today we'll be exploring the middle way. Yeah, the middle way. That's nice. I like a daily because then... It's um, different every day. Yes. Yeah. So these are guided meditations on issues like anxiety and stress and focus. You get a new one every day with daily calm, but there's also sleep stories. Those are bedtime stories for adults. How about Stephen Fry taking you to the lavender fields of France? Mm. Or explore New Zealand with Jerome Flynn from Game of Thrones. Bob Ross... And his happy little clouds. I always thought Bob Ross was kind of made you sleepy, and now you can actually use him to mm -hmm. go to sleep. There's wonderful soothing music. There are breathing exercises, gentle stretches to relax your body. A very easy way to relax every day. It's the number one app to help you meditate, sleep, and relax. App of the year. That's what Apple said in 2017 as part of Apple's best of 2018 list. It's a really lovely app. New year, new opportunity. I know one of the things all of us are hoping for in 2019 is a calmer, more relaxing life, a less, less stress. It's a great way to improve your mental well-being. <sighs> I sometimes listen to this. Yeah, they have great... This is all the music. It's beautiful mm -hmm. music. For a limited time, you can get 25% off your Calm Premium subscription at calm.com slash iOS today. And you'll get unlimited access to all of the content immediately. C-A-L-M dot C-O-M slash I-O-S today. I always, I, you know, just even talking about calm relaxes me. Mm -hmm. Calm dot com slash I-O-S today. Calm. I feel better already. Is it time to put on our, our hats? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's time to do some feedback. Oh, I was trying to avoid that part. <laughs> yes, I know. You can make Safari. Yes, Use yes, DuckDuckGo. Yes. Thank you very much. <gasps>
Um, well, yeah, I was going to say that. And also, uh, Allison Sheridan, uh, pod feet sent us a little video of how you uh, could do it, but we don't need you, that because you already did we've it. shown oh, sorry. you. Thank, Thank you, Allison. You. Uh, send us a video of a mistake that we made in this episode. <laughs> yeah, that would be good because <laughs> there are plenty. Uh, no, I, I, I didn't know that. And, uh, and I apologize. However, it, the, the point's still there, which is the default, which most people, you know, use forever is still Google. So Maybe Apple should make the default DuckDuckGo. I know that would be foregoing literally billions of dollars, uh, but maybe just make it DuckDuckGo. Mm -hmm. At least they give you the choice, which is right. nice. Yeah. Uh, Aaron from Hollywood writes, I recently encountered a website that was not exactly, quote, made for iPhone. The mobile version of the site was messy and cluttered, and I thought I was going to have to run over to my Mac until a simple Google search provided a cool tip that I think offers uh, others might appreciate. On your iPhone, if you press and hold the reload button on Safari, you are presented with a request desktop site option. Who would have known? Yeah, that's actually a feature I, I use a lot because people's mobile sites often aren't very good mm -hmm. or they're missing pieces or, you know, especially if you're on an iPad, mm -hmm. you really have all that screen real estate. Mm -hmm. It would be nice sometimes to get the, the desktop site. So that's, that's what happens. Press and hold the Safari button. Thank press you. and hold the Safari button. Uh, Percy writes, I notice on iOS today that you use Dark Sky. I downloaded the app a while ago. However, I stopped using it because it wasn't as good as AccuWeather at the time. And then I stopped using AccuWeather because of the tracking. Therefore, I use the weather app that comes with the iPhone, which is okay. I have two questions. Do you know whether Dark Sky, I notice it seems better now, tracks and sells your information? Also, Dark Sky wants access all the time to improve the experience of the app. Is that a good choice? Percy. Yeah, so this was a big story that uh, AccuWeather and others were tracking location. Um, their weather apps. So it is handy if they know where you are. Now, the point Percy's making is, well, they don't need to know constantly. They only need to know when I open the app. And almost all apps, this is part of Apple's own location uh, settings. You can set any app in location settings to not track your location except when it's uh, open. So this is where you go. You go to privacy, location services, and with Dark Sky as everything, you can set it that way, regardless of what Dark Sky wants. Mm -hmm. Now, you make an interesting point. Why would Dark Sky need to always know where I am? Well, as I showed earlier, those weather alerts is one reason. It's mm -hmm. not going to give you a, a weather alert that it's about to rain unless it knows where you are at all times. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are legitimate reasons also because maybe they want to open the app fast and not have to go out, figure out where you are, and then give you the weather. Uh, but if you could, you know, if you want, you can turn it off. That's one of the great things about all uh, Apple devices is you can choose whether location access is always available. I don't know. We should read the privacy policy. I think you had that up, Kevin. Yeah, they about don't. They've been very vocal. Dark Sky has been very vocal about how they do not. That's nice. Sell or share your location data. Like yeah. they. Um, so I mean, they could go back on this uh, at any time, I guess. But I mean, that you know, every privacy policy reserves the right to change or you know, all that stuff. But but right now they've been vocal about it. Like they tweeted, I think last year. You know, they're surprised. He, the creator of Dark Sky, was surprised at how many companies came to him asking if he would sell that information. Of course, it's and valuable he said, you know, information. I must assume that other companies sell this information, and yeah. they don't for now, which I think is definitely makes it worth paying for. So, uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons I really like Dark Sky. I have to point out that even though Apple lets you turn off location information on apps on a granular basis or say only when the app is running, that your cellular carrier is, of course, always aware of your location, mm -hmm. tracks you, and as we know in the past, has sold your information. They say they're not going to do it anymore. But so get a get an iPod. If if you're carrying yeah, if you're carrying an iPhone, you're you're carrying a tracking device that happens to have a microphone and and uh, and a camera on it. Uh, people know where you are. Mm -hmm. um, that's just that's just the way it is. Um, and uh, I don't I don't know if you don't want it. Yeah. Stop carrying a, a, a smartphone with you, I guess. I wonder I, how practical it would be to really have a new iPod, like as an adult. This is a really world. challenging issue because you, almost a lot a lot of the things you do, you, you want them, the weather. You want it to know where you are. I mean, you just do. Uh, there, I can I can think of scenarios where your location information could be used against you. 
I don't know if it is, but I could think of scenarios. I mean, after all, if somebody has your location information, they know where you live, they know where you work, they know where you go. If they have location information for many people, they might notice that, for instance, you spend time with one person uh, at home and another person in a hotel room. And that could be used against you. Um, so I understand that there are bad things. There's even, you know, commercial things. If you go to a Starbucks every morning, uh, Pete's Coffee might want to send you a notification and a coupon. So there's commercial uses for that Well, that's mostly that well. why it's used. You know... There's, it's used for a lot of things. There's a story today about Google's Sidewalk, which is a smart city enterprise that Google's doing, is giving, uh, selling to cities information about traffic. You know, cities in the past, in order to, you remember the rubber, the rubber tubes they put across the road to measure how many cars go down a road? Cities try to figure out a lot of this stuff, but they do it in a, in a piecemeal way that's not very good. You've got, uh, you know, every resident of the city pretty much carrying a smartphone where there be information about how many people are going down that road, how many people are using that exit, all sorts of information, how many people are trying to cross the street that would be very useful for city planners. So Sidewalk is selling to cities this information. They say we de-anonymize it. Google does something similar to what Apple does, which is they don't record your entire trip, but chunks of it. And that's precisely to avoid that thing of, well, we know where he sleeps every night. He must live here. Mm -hmm. So so there are things you can do to anonymize it. Google is apparently planning to do that with Sidewalk. Nevertheless, people are very upset about it. And this is a conversation we have a lot. We have it on, on This Week in Google a lot because there are definite benefits. This is mu a much better way to plan a city. There's a benefit mm -hmm. to everybody who lives in the city. Uh, and there are definitely issues with privacy uh, so I think we have to weigh the hazards with the benefits. And I think it's a mistake to just in a knee-jerk basis say, well, I don't want anything to ever know where I am anytime. First of all, that's almost impossible to achieve. As I said, you're going to have to leave this behind. You can't carry a smartphone with you if that's your desire. Uh, and uh, I, I think we get benefits that you know are not to be dismissed from it. So, And if you're using a weather app, it has to know where you are. So choose, one thing that's probably a good idea is to choose, ask the question that he asked, which is choose a weather app that says, well, we're not going to sell that information. Mm -hmm. But honestly, they're, they're not the only people who know where you are at all times. Facebook knows where you are. Do you have a Facebook app on your phone? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, the stuff. I saw a piece today in the Wall Street Journal about how colleges were tracking students um, to see how quickly they opened their acceptance emails to judge how much they were interested in going to the school like that's just crazy like you know just not knowing that that is you know a factor in a decision someone's making about you like how quickly you open your email yeah. i don't know it's just we i mean the technology itself welcome to the has, modern world I yeah it has a lot of benefits you have to walk around in a in a faraday shielded cage to really not be tracked and oh by the way there's cameras everywhere too i think that i think unfortunately that you know the, the horse has left the barn in this case but we can't give up. We have you to can do what vigilant. you want. You do what fight. you can. You could fight. Just because you can't do everything doesn't mean you should do nothing. Okay. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Christopher writes, uh, Leo talked about Netflix removing themselves from the Apple store because of the amount of money Apple takes with each subscription. I have another example I'd like to share with you. I recently decided you started using a VPN and looked at dozens of them and decided to go with Nord. If you get the yearly subscription with Apple, it costs eighty-two dollars a year, and if you and if you in turn go to the official Nord website, you can get Nord for three years for only a hundred dollars. Yeah, VPNs are somewhat of a bad example only because the pricing on VPNs is so wildly varied mm. depending on where you get it. Uh, it's very flexible, um, so. Uh, that probably isn't a great example, but it's but it's true. And I suspect one of the reasons it's more expensive if you, for anything when you buy it through Apple is the 30% Apple uh, charges. And that actually, that is part of that case, the Supreme Court case with Apple, is the, and the very important question, which the Supreme Court, I guess, will address, is do prices to individuals go up because of Apple's 30% uh, take? And I'd have to think they do. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things the Supreme Court has to decide. And the, the reason it's a decision, it's something they have to decide, is that what the court is deciding on uh, is whether an individual has standing to sue Apple or a company has standing to sue Apple over this 30%. If there's no 
uh, disadvantage to an individual, then they don't have standing to sue. Mm -hmm. If if the cost is only to the company, then the individual can't sue. But I think you can. This is an example of you can make a fairly strong case that those costs do get passed along to individuals. So I think we should have standing mm -hmm. in this in that particular case. Okay, one more comment, and then then you can wear hats. Okay. Uh, Mark. Mark recommended the Tin Type app. Do you remember I recommended that app the yes. other day that makes the old fashioned yes. photos? Uh, he says the most interesting part of the update was the selectable, selectable focus point feature that was added. And I think you sort of missed how it works. It's like the portrait feature that came with the new iPhone, except you just get, get to click anywhere in the image to pick what is in focus nice. and what is blurred. Um, and he sent us some photos that we can show. Now. Oh, that's so he, cool. Like just that's, so, yeah, so he has a clock. Above that's, a, him. of course, a feature of Apple's portrait mode. And that's the neat thing about this new hipstamatic uh, app, Tintype. Tintype, which, by the way, you can also get as part. I checked because remember oh. we talked about it came oh, it's from part of hipstamatic. hipstamatic. Oh. You can get it as the same price, 99 cents, as a hipstamatic filter, filter as so well. You don't have to have yeah. a separate app. So this, they, I think they often do that, which is take some of the filters in hipstamatic and sell them as a standalone program if you don't. But probably the best thing to do is get Hipstamatic because there's a lot of free mm -hmm. stuff and then pay the 99 cents for Tintype and yeah, you can get both. that makes sense. I yeah. love Hipstamatic. Yeah. Uh, I also love Atlassian and now it's time for you to talk about them because it's... You know, the world loves Atlassian. They are mm -hmm. doing gangbusters and there's a good reason for it. Atlassian is the best way to unlock your IT team's potential for them to collaborate with you, the rest of the organization, with each other. Atlassian tools are collaboration tools that empower teams everywhere in the world. We use it. We're an Atlassian house. That's what I call it, Atlassian house. Mm -hmm. I bet I bet you know many. In fact, you probably worked for some. It all starts with Jira, which, is, of course, is the agile development tool. But the nice thing about Jira is it integrates with everything else. So Atlassian is the company behind Jira. But they have tools not just for developers, but for all teams of all sizes, from DevOps to Agile, IT apps to Ops to ITSM, and whatever else you're getting into. We use Jira to keep track of problems and solutions. We use Confluence, which integrates beautifully with Jira in order to record what we've done to make a, a, a documentation for our workflow. Bitbucket, fabulous if you've got code and code uh, bases that you need to keep track of. Atlassian forms the backbone of an effective cross-team project planning organization and communication with jira ops ops genie status page they help teams better detect incidents alert response teams coordinate response efforts to resolve issues faster and keep customers or stakeholders updated what i love about atlassian is they have the right tool for the job for instance trello which is a fabulous project management tool also integrates with jira with confluence and with everything else your team can choose the tools that are right for your current framework and trust that as you grow, they will grow with you. And those tools will grow with you. Everybody uses Atlassian. You should too. Like all the Atlassian products, the tools for your IT team are easy, quick to set up, and free to try. Just go to Atlassian.com to find out which Atlassian offer is right for your team. A-T-L-A-S-S-I-A-N. Atlassian. Try it today and unleash your team's uh, potential. We we are a big fan of Atlassian. It's, you know, one of the big challenges is uh, is getting stuff documented. You know, people will make changes, they'll do things, and we really love it because it all kind of flows one into the other. It also integrates into Slack, our messaging solution. I mean, it's just perfect, Atlassian. You're going to love it. Atlassian for IT, Atlassian.com. My head's getting a little cold. It's time to mm -hmm. put on the official headgear of Paraguay. Mm. Is mine also The from leather Paraguay? skull cap. Where's mine from? Do Yours you know? is from the street. Oh, you found it on the street? <laughs> you bought it from someone on the street. I bought it. Well, I don't know where. You know what? The, the mean streets? Uh, the provenance of our hats is often <laughs> a mystery. I do remember buying this in Paraguay, however. Oh. Yeah, so I know this is Paraguayan. <sighs> the important thing is that we're wearing hats because everyone knows that, that is the, the cold thing. gets out of your head first. So <laughs> that's, that's why we're that's wearing That's right. Hat. Out of your head and out of your feet. Yeah. I wear a hat oh. on my feet, too. <laughs> Those are called socks. Oh! <laughs> um, this is App Cap time. Yes. Our favorite app. Okay, so... I'm also wearing my App Socks. <laughs> I have a little... <gasps> we should change it to App Socks. Then we'd have to show feet. Yeah, maybe not. I mean, with, we wouldn't show feet because they'd have socks on them. See my Argyles, though? They're oh, cute, yeah. aren't they? They are cute. I've gone Argyle. You just have to trust me. Um, so, you will be happy to know... 
that I no longer use Sprint as my cell phone carrier. I think you will be happy to know. <laughs> I, I'm happy to know. I Have used you used Sprint all these years? All these years. Now, I, I, don't, there's, I have nothing against Sprint. I was a Sprint customer, too, but uh, Petaluma is not a great Sprint town. No, but I'm loyal. Yeah. I'm loyal. <laughs> For reasons no one <laughs> no. understands. So where did I'm you lazy. go? What do you do? Well, you won't be happy to know that I just switched to AT&T. Why would be I be unhappy? Well, they I'm all suck. <laughs> that, that's so, the truth. Um, okay, so I, I switched because I was done with Sprint and I no longer owed them money. I wasn't in a contract anymore. Because right, you and, have more than just your phone. Yeah, I five. It's the whole five. family, yeah. Um, so I purchased some new phones. I did purchase some new phones too. So I was like, okay, I'm, wow. uh, I'm ready to switch. This is a big commitment. This yeah. is a big deal. Yeah, it was. So I yeah. went to Verizon. Um, I, you know, I looked into the like other smaller ones and it just wasn't going to work for me. But I went to Verizon and then I went to AT&T. When I walked into AT&T, they offered me free home internet for life. <laughs> oh, yeah? For life. And I tweeted it. I was like, is there any reason I shouldn't do this? And everyone said, yes, there's many reasons. <laughs> Whose life? Are they going to kill you? AT&T is horrible. Don't do this, Megan. You're Wait, really, silly. for life is good. For That's life. a good deal. Free With for life. With Uverse? Oh, I don't With know. With AT&T service? Yeah, AT&T service. Fiber. Fiber? Well, fiber to the node. You know, to the corner. So they told me, because I, I had Sonic before, who I love. It was very good. I love Sonic. Like, they anytime I had any problem, here. I called them up any hour of the day. Somebody answered, answered all yeah, my questions. Yeah, free is a good price. I know. And so they told me at AT&T. Is AT this going somewhere? This, yeah. Okay. <laughs> they told me at AT&T that this would be the same service that I would get from Sonic. Same up, same down. Um, they promised. Well, uh, this sounds like a great deal. It's not DSL. This is fiber to the node. Yeah. So that means it's going to be pretty. What was the speed? Did they tell you? Oh, well, I can tell you right now. You got it right now? AT so I got it. Because I, I would free. I, got, um, I also have, I moved five Do you have to stay on AT&T forever? Forever <laughs> for the rest of my life. Well, unless I want to start paying for something. I wonder what the speed is. I mean, if I, if I went off um, AT&T within the next couple of months, they would charge me for whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I can do a speed test. So I'm sh my app cap is the AT&T app. Because if you're using AT&T, you might as well have as much control as you can. So it looks like the last speed test was 125, 1030 a.m. Okay. Um, I'll do another speed test. Well, all right. So it's not super fast. It's fast enough. Yeah, yeah. So for that's free, the, yeah, twenty to twenty-five down, three to five up. What free, do you have? Free, free. Under, I have a hundred down, twenty up. But that's but I pay a lot more than free. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they also gave me two free phones because we bought two phones, and um, yeah, so wow. I'm indebted to them for life. Maybe I, I should change to AT and T. Um, I bet I can't get it in my neighborhood because I'm out in the country. You, you're not I don't that want far DSL. I, I get good speed on Comcast. So but I don't like... The problem is no one likes their cable company no. or their phone company. No, they don't. I'm so looking at the idea of just getting an iPod. And do it. Um, so you, you Maybe you should just... And then AT&T. The good news is AT&T isn't tracking you. <laughs> I never said that. Okay. I said just because you can't do everything doesn't mean you can do nothing. Like I have AT&T, <laughs> so maybe I make some um, privacy adjustments elsewhere. Uh, so 33 down 6.69 up that's that's pretty good for free yeah um, how has it been has this? it been good in the house uh yeah it's been great and you know we have five devices going we have everyone in their what own what do rooms. you use for your uh, wi-fi i can't remember i use an euro euro okay. yeah um so, and so the euro works well with that yeah the euro so it so everything's connected through the euro so it'll say which devices so i have a euro that's another then, way by the way to check your speed is to use the euro app it's right there, yes yeah. you can do that yeah. too and then i have one other device um i can do some of the euro app gives me more control yeah um over it but this is you can walk around with augmented reality this says use augmented reality to visualize your wi-fi signal strength as you walk around your home so you can walk around your home and see where you need more strength and you could move your arrows around there um different tools you can see what your data usage is you can check your health your speed desk i can you know invite a guest to my network you can easily change your network name or password through the this app if you have to have at and you might as well get this app and control everything you can look at your billing and and all that. A Sprint never had something like this. Um, so I am, I'm happy so far with my free, but that, the, the Sprint breakup was fine. I said, don't let the door hit you on the way out. The Sonic 
breakup, I almost cried. I was like, this is why I'm doing it. And I'm so sorry. And I love you guys. And if I ever Not change, Sonic I'll come back. Not Sonic the Hedgehog. A different Sonic. <laughs> Sonic. They're a local company. And I swear, if you can get them, get them. Because they oh, I know. are great. I know. If it wasn't free, I wouldn't have switched. Wow. That's a lot of money you're saving. But, you know, yeah, I think. Sonic the, was $80 a I month. I think AT&T is saying, well, you're going to be spending so much money on those yeah, cell phones. Exactly. We'll probably make it up. Yeah. I mean, my total bill for five um, phones is over $200. Yeah. Wow. Um, so. What was it on the Sprint? It was, it was around, it, would, it was around 180 and I would call and then say, how can my bill be smaller? And then they right. would say, we have this discount. So or that you've discount. increased your bill. Yeah. But that wasn't the main part oh, of doing this. Oh, but that's with. Um, paying for two phones. Oh, okay. Yeah, we needed new phones. Yeah. Um, so. Did you get all iPhones? Uh, yes. The boys have both have iPhone 8s, the smaller ones, and Annabella and Marco have the 10R, and they're happy with them. What would you say if I could, if I told you you could get something that is as powerful and flexible as Lightroom, which is $10 a month from Adobe, for one time $10? That's... Now how much would you pay? <laughs> I think, uh, well, if it were me, it would be you paying, so $10. $10. This is Darkroom, not Lightroom, but Darkroom. And this is my app cap for the week. And this is a great photo editor with many, I think, all of the same features as Lightroom. In fact, even a few more because uh, they also have some great prepackaged filters. And you can create your own filters, which is fantastic. Um, Darkroom is free to try, and then they have in-app purchases to add features. So you can add the features that you want, or you can just, for $10, buy it all, everything, all of it. I have to say, I'm I'm really impressed. It, it, it automatically ties immediately to Apple's photos, which is nice. Uh, Lightroom, you have to import stuff from the photos. You know, you have to, you know, with Lightroom, the Lightroom workflow is a little bit of a pain on the iPad because... You first put your photos in Apple Photos, and then you have to bring your photos over from Apple Photos to Lightroom. Plus, Lightroom has its own synchronization and stuff. I'd want to just use... So I'm just using iCloud, Apple Photos. It sees them. I didn't have to do any import. If they're raw, it sees that they're raw. See, the little R here tells me that this is a raw image. It even handles live photos. It's smart about Apple's live photos. So let's take, a, uh, let's take an image. Uh, well, actually, the one I was working on was not very good. Um, you can, how about this horse? <laughs> this is, I think, a live photo. It's loading it up. Uh, it's taking a little longer, which tells me there's multiple images in here. And uh, it's, it, normally it's pretty snappy. Uh, this is an iPad Pro. I think, oh, I know what it is. These are all multiple exposures. Yeah, these are raw. Oh. So if I'm, if I'm moving from, these, it's pretty quick. Yeah. Right. And it has uh, it has lots of nice features. It has all of the settings that I typically use in Lightroom. For instance, I often uh, just bump vibrance a little bit. Um, you can play with shadows, brightness, contrast, highlights. Turn those up a little bit. Let's turn up the saturation a little bit. You can add fade. You can add grain. Vignette it a little bit, which is nice. Sharpness. Those are just that set of sliders. Uh, the, so we so showed filters, sliders. Of course, you can straighten it, and you can straighten it in real time, which is really handy. Crop it as well in uh, real time. You can also do curves. So this is a big deal in Lightroom, the fact that you can do channels. So the red channel where most of the contrast is stored, the green channel, the blue channel, or all, all three at once. I can work directly with various hues here's the histogram so i can see what i'm doing i can change this is for frames so if i'd like to put a frame around it and maybe let's make that a darker frame and like that that's handy this is a really nice little program it's called darkroom and i actually i don't know how i managed to miss this it's been around for a while here's another nice feature i can uh i can do before and after so i can see what changes i've made and actually, I did kind of improve that picture, didn't I? I kind of pop the sky out there, but maybe I want to dim it down a little bit. Um, really a nice a nice little uh, program to take a look at. Free to try uh, and, uh, and use a lot of the basic features. And then if you want to add additional features, and I'm sure there's more as well. And look here, it, it has some of the filtering features that are built into Apple's Photos. So I can say, I only want to see my 
live photos. I only want to see my portrait photos. Why, look, there's a, a portrait of the lovely Megan Maroney. Mm. And I can I can play with it uh, yeah, you need directly out of photos, which is very nice. You know, it would be great, instead of like a game subscription service, if they had just a general app subscription service, like a bunch of different That of apps, I could see. Like that $10 apps. If you got together and yeah. it was like you could, you know, they somehow banded together. Well, maybe that's a, what they're really planning. and and, and, and Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Because um, I know you can get app bundles for cheaper, um, but it would be great just to have that kind of like, oh, well, I pay a subscription. I can might as well get whatever I want. I agree. I agree. Yeah. It supports the new Heath format, too, by the way, on mm -hmm. iPhone uh, and uh, iPad, which is great. So you can export and import uh, Heath photos. It understands raw data. There's no extra step to import the raw data. Uh, I think this is a really nice little program. Oh, it shares directly to Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. If I used any of those, uh, I could do that. Darkroom. Yeah, 10 bucks though, I think, for what you get is, uh, is not bad. Um, desktop class without the desktop. This is the beginning, I think. We're going to start seeing... Uh, really powerful iPad Pro uh, apps. So this is the first one. And I'm really, uh, I'm really impressed. I, uh, I have to say, I wanted a way to edit photos directly on the iPad, and I think this is what it's going to be for me. Darkroom. So before we let everyone go on to their day with the the amazing knowledge that we've imparted, um, we should tell people to fill out our survey. Oh, that's right. We do this once a year. We have a kind of general twit survey, so we can get to know you a little bit better. It helps us. Uh, plan our programming. It also helps us when we're talking to advertisers and they say, well, who's listening? We don't at any point uh, snoop on you. We, we take your privacy very seriously. So we don't track any of your usage. We don't know who you are, uh, you know, who downloads our shows. So it's a little bit helpful for us if we're going to compete with all of those guys who snoop on you, like Google and, uh, and Facebook to have at least some basic information about your age, your job description, your income, things like that. Now, it's all completely voluntary. If you don't want to answer any particular question, you don't have to. We do not collect your email address, so uh, we won't be getting back to you. Uh, but it's just very helpful for us. We do this once a year. So if you don't mind, if you would like to help us uh, make better shows, uh, in fact, the last question is, uh, is about what subject matter you'd like us to cover on future programming on Twit. Just go to twit.to slash survey 19 our 2019 twit survey shouldn't take you more than a few minutes it's about i don't know how many questions a dozen questions something like that twit.to slash survey 19 or also if you just go to our front page i think there'll probably be a link there and if you do want someone to get back to you then after you finish the survey email, email megan yeah megan at twit.tv tell her leo's wrong um Try to, or just FaceTime me, and then you'll just hear my audio. Um, you'll hear us arguing. <laughs> exactly. You um, went to what? AT&T? <laughs> you know. uh, yeah, I love to hear from you. Send your videos. Uh, send your corrections. Send your comments and your questions. Love your questions. They're always so great, and they help me really think about topics I wouldn't have considered. So mm -hmm. Megan at twit.tv or at Megan Maroney on Twitter. Um, we do the show live Every uh, every Tuesday at about 9 a.m. Pacific, that's noon Eastern time, 16, I'm sorry, 1700 UTC. Please tune in and watch live if you want to. It's a twit.tv slash live. You can also join us in the studio. Email tickets at twit.tv so we can put a chair out for you. But if you can't watch or listen live, you can always download op, uh, copies of everything we do uh, from our website, in this case, twit.tv slash iOS. You know what? The easiest thing to do, subscribe. Open up your podcatcher. Search for iOS today and uh, subscribe to the audio or video feed, and that way you'll get it the minute it's available every Tuesday afternoon. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time on oh. iOS. Today. 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 today.